Madam Chair, the time is four o'clock and we are now recording. Thank you, Mr. Kirschman. We'll wait till Mr. Watkins is seated. Time is four o'clock. We call this meeting of the Cochise County Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance on this our flag day. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you. On flag day. It is time for roll call. Mr. Montgomery. Present. Mr. Limbach. Present. Mr. Watkins. Present. Mr. Young. Present. Thank you. Mr. Gonzalez. Present. Mr. Marsky. Present. Mr. Saunders. Present. And Ms. Welch. Present. Thank you very much. Everyone is present. Therefore, we have a quorum. It is time to approve the previous month's minutes. Do we have any comments or corrections before we do so? Hearing none, I need a motion to approve last month's minutes. I make a motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Saunders. A second? Second. Mr. Limbach. We will now do a roll call vote. Mr. Montgomery? Uh, aye. Mr. Limbach? Aye. Mr. Watkins? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mr. Gonzalez? Staying. And Mr. Marsky? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. And Ms. Welch? Abstain. Thank you. The chair votes aye. It is unanimous. The motion to approve last month's minutes carries. At this, we need to read the ground rules, please, Mr. Kirschman. Here are the ground rules. Please turn off cell phones or at least silence ringers. Please be polite to other stakeholders. No applause, no booing, no cheering. If you desire to speak, fill out a speaker information form and submit to the planner before the start of the meeting. This is not required for the docket applicants. Speakers must use the microphone over here to capture your comments into the minutes. We do have a speaker's clock there and the time limits are five minutes for call to the public, 10 minutes for applicants, five minutes for supporters or those opposed, and then five minutes for applicants rebuttal. Each elected county supervisor appoints three commissioners to staggered four year terms. Up to three are from cities, at least six from unincorporated areas. A commissioner's service is pro bono. A quorum is five commissioners. A majority vote passes a motion, a tie vote fails. For special use permits, a tie vote triggers a rehearing at the next meeting. Special use dockets are approved by the commission. Appeals of special use decisions can be made to the Board of Supervisors and filed within 15 days of the commission approval. Appeal procedures can be obtained on the county website. For assistance, call the case planner. For other docket decisions than special use, requests result in recommendations forwarded by the Commission to the Board of Supervisors. To voice disagreement with these recommendations, attend the Board of Supervisors public hearing dealing with the docket. Call to the public. Pursuant to Arizona Revised Statute Section 38 431.01H, this is an opportunity for the public to comment. Individuals are invited to address the commission on any issue within the commission's jurisdiction. Since commissioners may not discuss items that are not specifically identified on the agenda, commission action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter 
responding to any criticism or scheduling the matter for further consideration and decision at a later date. Do we have any speakers for the call to public? Hearing none, we will move on to the public hearing of our docket issues. The first docket this evening is RZ23-08, named Dickamore. The applicant requests a rezoning from SR43 to RU4. The applicant's full name is Dale Dickamore. Is the applicant present? Do we have him online? Mr. Coxworth, are you ready for your report? And do we know if Mr. Dickamore can be? Um, I, I haven't heard from Mr. Dickamore. Uh, this is a just a down zoning, pretty straightforward um, in the Baba Kamara area. Um, this is a request to rezone from SR43, which is uh, one home per acre to RU4, which is a rural zoning district, one home per four acres. The property was rezoned in 2005 with a condition that the applicant files a, sub, a subdivision plat within 18 months of approval. The area has not developed as expected. And to remove this condition, the applicant must revert the zoning back to RU4. The parcels are 106, 15, 42, and 43. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it's about 80 acres. It's currently vacant, uh, proposed use of the property would be single family residential. Residential. The area in yellow is the area that is subject to the rezoning. It's located on the corner of Casey Williams and so Zemo, located in the Babo Kamari. A drone view of the property to be rezoned. As you can see, it's vacant. This is currently looking north. Um, you can see the county truck there on the on uh, Casey Williams Way. Staff did um, mail or put a legal notice in the newspaper we mailed to property owners within 300 feet of the subject parcels. To date, the staff has received one letter in opposition. The letter in opposition had a concern with water. Um, I think there's a misunderstanding, which is not uncommon with our down zonings, that we are reducing the density um, of the parcels. I can, and I have that for you if you like, but that's essentially what they're um, statement was for opposition. Uh, this request does comply with 11 of the applicable rezoning factors used by staff to analyze this project, and this would be in keeping with the character of the existing development in the area and factors against we have not identified any. That concludes my short presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Has Mr. Dickamore arrived by phone? I think not. We will accept Mr. Coxworth's presentation on behalf of the applicant and declare the public hearing portion open. This is the time where comments from other persons, either for or against, can be heard. Is there anyone present or online that wishes to speak about this item? Hearing none. We call for the applicant's rebuttal, which is moot at this point. Uh, the public hearing is therefore closed. Does the commission have any questions? Do not. Thank you. Is there more summary, Mr. Coxworth, that you? Nope, staff recommends um, that you make a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors for approval. Thank you. I now call for the motion. Madam Chairman. Mr. Markski. I'm to recommend approval to the Board of Supervisors for the rezoning docket RZ2308, located in parts of 10615, 042, and 043, 
from SR 33 to RU 4, factors in favor of approval constitute the findings of fact. Is there a second? Mr. Watkins for the second. Any discussion of this motion? Call for the question by roll call. Mr. Montgomery. Questions? And you heard no resistance. I would vote uh, to approve. Aye for Mr. Montgomery. Mr. Limbach. Aye. Mr. Watkins. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mr. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Martsky. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. And Ms. Welch. Aye. The chair votes aye. It is unanimous. This motion passes and will be forwarded to the Board of Supers with the recommendation of approval. Item number two, CPA 23-02 and RZ 23-09. The applicant requests both a comprehensive plan amendment from neighborhood conservation to rural, and then a rezoning from SR 43 to RU4. The applicant's name is Mark Fruit. Is the applicant present? A call from Mr. Fruit. Am I saying it correctly? Bridget. Ms. Bronson. Yes, uh, good afternoon. As mentioned, the application is both a comprehensive plan amendment and a rezoning request. The applicant, Mr. Fruge, desires to create a residential homestead on his property that consists of approximately 18 acres. Presently, his property is classified as B neighborhood conservation in the comprehensive plan and is zoned SR 43. He requests that the comprehensive plan be amended to D rural for his parcels and that the zoning be changed to RU4. The property is located north of uh, Wilcox. Next slide. The area is sparsely populated with little infrastructure. Here are photos of the access road and other parcels in the area. The surrounding land is largely undeveloped with a few ranches. In contrast, at the time that the growth area and plan designations were created in the comprehensive plan, the area was envisioned to become urbanized with smaller residential lots and the platted subdivision. The map, the platted subdivision in blue, Growth area is outside of the platted subdivision. The growth area is D, and the plan designation is rural. The next map shows the zoning. The platted subdivision is zoned SR43, and you can see that outside of the platted subdivision, the area is zoned RU4. The following map shows the adjacent development. The area remains rural and has not urbanized. The applicant believes that the changing the comprehensive plan growth area and the plan designation to D rural will be much more consistent with the actual existing land uses in the area. He also believes that the rezoning of the property to RU4 and using the property as a homestead will be much more compatible with the area than denser development that is allowed under the existing SR43 zoning. The coaching zoning regulations require that six factors be analyzed when considering an amendment to the comprehensive plan. The six factors are on the The factors in favor of approval of the comprehensive plan amendment are number one, the pattern of growth no longer reflects the type of growth expected in the current designation. Number two, substantial changes have occurred in the area. Rural land uses predominate rather than residences located within a platted subdivision. Number three, the Bell Ranch subdivision was originally platted in 1972, and since that time, little development has occurred. Six, a large unit of the subdivision plat was abandoned. Factors against approval plan amendment are one, the I'm sorry, the now it's depressed. <laughs> okay. 
All right, I'm so sorry. Um, factors against approval are the application does not have substantial support from the neighboring property owners. It should be clarified that neither is there substantial opposition to the request. The majority of surrounding property owners did not comment. Number two, the comprehensive plan amendment will break the growth pattern and uh, the plan designation of B neighborhood conservation in the area. The Cochise County zoning regulations require that 15 factors be analyzed when considering a rezoning request. The factors are on the screen and in your staff memo. The factors in favor of the rezoning are one, an adequate land use concept plan was provided. Two, development consistent with the rezoning can comply with applicable site development standards. Three, the adjacent districts will remain capable of development. Four, the rezoning will not create any non-conforming land uses. Five, the rezoning is consistent with existing development. Six, development consistent with the rezoning will preserve the functions of the surrounding roads. Seven, the rezoning application process complied with the public input requirement. Eight, future development will incorporate water saving measures that meet or exceed Cochise County requirements. And nine, the rezoning will comply with comprehensive plan policies. Factors against the rezoning request are number one, Rural zoning allows a greater range of uses than those permitted in residential zoning districts. Number two, the rezoning will break the existing zoning pattern of the Bell Ranch subdivision, which is SR43. The applicant was planning to be present. I don't know um, what has happened, um, but I'd be happy to answer any questions you have for staff. Thank you, Ms. Bronson. We will consider that, consider that also the applicant's statement unless there is some legal reason we should not do so can staff advise since this is in the, is in the nature of less intense um, uses i think will continue this is the time for the public hearing we call for comments from other persons for or against is there anyone online or in the room that would like to comment on this docket Hearing none, uh, normally we ask for the applicant's rebuttal. We can waive that at this point and declare the public hearing closed. We move into commission discussion. Are there any questions of Ms. Bronson on this docket? Thank you. I do the have chair. a question. Ms. Welch? Yes, I just I didn't hear any mention of that. I know that subdivision has CCNRs. None of that was I didn't see that mentioned anywhere unless I just missed it. Madam Chairman, um, the Bronson? the county is not allowed to enforce CCNRs, so we don't consider them when we're looking at rezoning applications. OK, I just wanted to make sure that the applicant is aware of that. If he plans to homestead that there are CCNRs out there. Duly noted, Ms. Bronson. Thank you. Yes. yes. Thank you. Chair has a question. What's the disposal of the road or will that be private property or will continue to be dedicated? What is that road through the two parcels? Yes, it's it's an unmaintained uh, county road and, and this is the condition that the road is in. And so that road will continue to be dedicated? It will not be removed? No, it will not. Okay. Thank you. Has anyone else thought of any questions? So it is time for the planning director summary and recommendation. Anything else, Ms. Bronson? Uh, no further comments other than to state that staff recommends approval of dockets CPA 2302 and RZ 2309 and sample motions are on the screen. Thank you. A call for the motion of CPA 23-02 first. Mr. Marczewski. I move to recommend to the Board of Supervisors approval of the comprehensive plan amendment CPA 23-02 located on parcels 202-76-227-A and 202-76-098. A, from neighborhood uh, conservation to rural factors of favor approval constitute the findings of fact. Is there a second? A second. 
Mr. Gonzalez, thank you. This is a time for discussion of the motion. Anything? I'll just offer, um, Chair, the many um, items that we review here. When there is no opposition to a project, I take note of that and I, and I pay attention when there is opposition, but having none, um, I'm just compelled to agree. Yes, sir, indeed. Anything else? Madam Chair, just to just to clarify, there was a letter of opposition. Uh, there were two signatories, a husband and a wife. And then there was a second letter that the applicant thought that this would uh, change the comprehensive plan, land use, and the rezoning on his property, and he didn't want his property rezoned. I'm sorry, was there a reason on the first two opposition people? Uh, just don't, they don't desire change. Okay, thank you. I was aware of those. And did I understand that the other uh, objection was mistaken in thinking that they would be rezoned? Madam Chair, yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any further discussion? We will now call for the vote. Mr. Montgomery? Vote aye to approve. Mr. Limbach. Aye. Mr. Watkins. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. And Mr. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Martsky. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. And Ms. Welch. Nay. And the chair votes aye. The ayes have it. Madam Chair, I'm going to interrupt if Ms. Welch can uh, explain why she has a negative vote on this. Yes, thank you, Ms. Welch. Because I live in this area, um, this, this is it's my division, and I see all the area out there, and I I just it it doesn't seem like the right move to me for that area. I've been in real estate in the local market for 22 years, and it just doesn't seem right to change it at this point in time. Thank you, Ms. Welch, and thank you, Mr. Coxworth, for reminding us. This item, a majority vote is aye, and this item will be forwarded to the Board of Supervisors with the recommendation of approval. Any person not agreeing with this action should attend the Board of Supervisors meeting dealing with this docket. Now we need a motion, please, for RZ 23-09. Madam Chair. Mr. Martsky. I move to recommend the Board of Supervisors approval of the rezoning. RZ 23019, located in parcel 202-76-227A and 202-76-0988 from SR 43 to RU4. Factors in favor of approval constitutes findings fact. And a second, please. I'll a second that, thank you. Mr. Montgomery, <laughs> is there any further discussion? Hearing none. We will now take the vote. Mr. Montgomery. I'll vote aye. Mr. Limbach. Aye. Mr. Watkins. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mr. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Martsky. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. And Ms. Welch. Nay. Thank you, ma'am. Same reasons as before? Correct. Thank it, you. It just a lot of people, um, to just clarify a little bit more, and I don't know if this is something that they may be considering is we've had a lot of influx of people coming into the area and they're specifically looking for parcels of that zoning are you for so is it just a ploy to sell the property is kind of what's in the back of my mind. Thank you. Anything else from the commission? Thank you for reminding me the chair votes aye. The motion does carry and will be forwarded to the Board of Supervisors with a recommendation of approval. Moving on, I think this is item three. SU 23-12 called Ocotillo Storage. The applicant requests a special use authorization for mini warehouse and self storage facility in Benson. Uh, 
The applicant's name is Caleb Malboff. Is the applicant present? Did I butcher your name? Did I butcher your name? Thank you. I know we've seen you a couple times. I should have it down by now. Could we please get the planning director's report, Mr. Kirschman? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. This request is on 15 acres uh, total. Approximately 10 acres will be used for the special use uh, at its build out. It's located on parcel 123 a Current zoning is R36, which is residential, one dwelling per 36,000 square foot. It does allow for a whole host of special uses, including uh, mini and self storage. Uh, it is in growth category B, which is community growth areas. Uh, it is in a developing uh, plan designation. There is no area plan. The existing use is vacant uh, and the proposed use is a self storage facility. Uh, again, this is located on Ocotillo Road Four feathers kind of bisects the property. Uh, the northern portion where that wash is located in your screen will be undisturbed as not part of uh, the project. It will be developed there south of Four Feathers. Uh, City of Benson is located directly to uh, the west on the other side of Ocotillo. It is also located on the southern boundary where you can just kind of see uh, the edge of that small lot platted subdivision. So the comprehensive plan uh, for uh, Cochise County designates this area as developing. City of Benson comprehensive plan actually does designate this area as low density residential. Uh, which is one acre lots um, in the city. Uh, across Ocotillo, it's designated as industrial by the city of Benson. To the south, it's designated as both commercial and mixed use. Uh, so this is an area of growth. For those that are not familiar with the area, Interstate 10 uh, is within earshot of this property. Uh, as staff was out there posting the property, you could constantly hear the trucks uh, driving up and down Interstate 10. Uh, Denny's, uh, a hotel, uh, the city's waste transfer facility and golf course uh, are all in this area. It's also where the Country Music Festival was hosted a couple months ago, for those that might recall that. Uh, there's also a temporary batch plant set up uh, in the vicinity uh, for the uh, ADOT project on State Route uh, 80. Uh, so this is in an area of, of a lot of mixed uses. Uh, it is in an area anticipated by both the county and the city as uh, growth areas. Uh, as uh, you can see on the screen, there is a very large uh, or excuse me, small lot um, subdivision platted there um, just to the south of this entire area. Um, and at some point in time in the future, maybe it'll be developed, maybe it'll be redeveloped as something different, um, but it is zoned as business um, for the city. Uh, again, zoning this area, uh, this pocket is zoned R36. Across the street, we've got B2 in the city. Uh, we've got industrial one. Uh, caddy corner and again we've got b2 to the south this is the applicant site plan uh, it is a phase development so initially uh, the first phase will be located along ocotillo road the applicant worked with staff to uh, make sure the gate uh, to the entrance was far enough back that vehicles uh, and trucks with trailers uh, moving vans would not be uh, blocking Ocotillo Road, uh, and that has been satisfied, uh, or that has satisfied um, the requirements of our engineering department. When they move forward with the project, they will have to provide uh, grading plans, um, right away uh, improvement plans. They will have to pave uh, the right away, uh, excuse me, the approach to Ocotillo Street. Uh, they'll have to provide drainage analysis of the site uh, and either do retention or detention or other uses on the site. Now, as noted in your uh, packet, and I may discuss in other places, uh, the property directly to the um, east of this site um, did uh, write a significant letter in opposition that was included in your packet. Um, lots of things noted in there. Uh, just a couple things though I'll point out is there was reference to a TR36 zoning district. Uh, it uh, was at one point in time TR36, uh, but TR36 is essentially the same as our R36. There was no changes made when the county did that transition. In fact, if anything, TR36 allowed for smaller lots of 30,000 square feet in the set of the 36. Um, so I wanted to make mention of that. The other was the applicant did try to work uh, with that neighbor, uh, was unsuccessful in, in reaching out, making connection. Uh, part of the discussion um, in the letter uh, was that the applicant provide a 100 foot setback from their property line and then construct an eight foot high wall. Um, the applicant um, would 
possibly consider that. Uh, however, uh, in light of the the opposition and uh, you know the the ongoing uh, inability to to connect with the applicant at this time, he would not agree to a condition uh, to that requirement. Um, it should also be noted that in our zoning regulations, that would be uh, that is not required. Um, you do have to have screening, but it could be a located along property line. And as his site plan shows, he does have either a wall or um, privacy fencing uh, all along the property lines, which would comply with our requirements. A couple photographs uh, of the site on the top and then of uh, Ocotillo Road uh, on the bottom. Some of the surrounding properties uh, top left is the adjacent property. Um, the uh, top right is uh, property across the street. And then um, the one on the bottom is the KLA campground that's down Four Feathers Road. So there are 10 factors that staff uses to evaluate all special use proposals and as submitted the application complies with nine and with conditions it complies with two additional factors. So it complies with duly adopted plans. It is in uh, compliance with uh, the zoning, excuse me, with the uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, it is compliance with the zoning district purpose statement as this is a, uh, uh, a use that is allowed uh, pursuant to a special use. Uh, there are no uh, anticipated uh, traffic circulation issues. It does have adequate services and infrastructure for the pro proposed project. Uh, public input, we did receive uh, two letters in opposition. Those were included uh, in the packet uh, for the commission. Uh, complies with offsite impacts. Uh, there won't be any hazardous materials uh, and it will also comply with water conservation. Uh, there will be a small office uh, only um, and no other anticipated uh, impacts to water. Uh, those facilities will use low flow uh, fixtures. Uh, any landscaping will be drought tolerant uh, or um, hardscape. Uh, and then it does comply with development along major streets and significant site development standards, and we can discuss uh, some of those conditions um, a little bit further down the road if need be. So we do have four factors in favor of the approving the request. First is that the project with recommended conditions complies with 10 of the 10 criteria used by staff uh, to evaluate the special use. The project is consistent with the goals and policies of the comprehensive plan. The project will be a locally owned business and provide a service for residents is consistent compatible with the zoning district purpose statement. In fact, we do have the two letters opposition. With that, that concludes my presentation. The applicant is present and I'd be happy to answer any questions following public comments. Thank you, Mr. Kirschman. Mr. Malvo, would you like to step up and make your applicant statement? Please state your full name and address before you begin. Caleb Malbuff, 1778 East Ramsey Road in Benson, off the Pomeranian exit. Uh, Robert did a great job presenting. I really don't think there's anything else I could say. Um, it does pain me to have opposition of any kind. It's not fun. My, our plan is to hopefully at some point be able to sit down and, you know, make hopefully everybody happy by doing larger setbacks and uh, privacy fences. So hopefully we can make that work, make everybody happy. Thank you. Thank you. The public hearing is now open. I do have two forms for speakers. Uh, the first one is Kathy. I'm sorry, I can't. Is it Glidewell? Yes, ma'am. If you'd come up, please. State your name and address before you speak. Thank you. My name is Kathy Glidewell. I live at 317 West Four Feathers in Benson, Arizona. My parcel number is 12309011108. I am the only parcel that is directly adjacent to the proposed property with the exception of the undeveloped parcels that are within the city limits. Um, the additional parcel that is across the street against uh, is unoccupied and vacant at this time. The actual zoning for this parcel is TR36. That's how I purchased the property. I have not been notified of any changes in that zoning since. 
Um, the TR 36 zoning regulation um, donates that they are supposed to have one residence per five acre parcel, and that was when I purchased it. The proposed special use is not consistent with the reduced density and building structures established by the TR 36 zone. This was established to create a low density buffer area between light industrial and dense housing areas and low density rural areas consisting of large parcels and farming zones. Directly behind and across this parcel, as you could see on the map, is property that is already designated to, for this type of a structure. This property would not require rezoning special permits or variants of any kind, and there is already an established neutral corridor between the zones as a utility right-of-way. County Zoning Regulation 7TR, Transitional Residential Zoning District, Section 703, Permitted Uses Commentary clearly states, quote, because the special uses permitted in RU are not included in TR, but are included in other non-rural districts as appropriate, the TR district no longer serves as a high density rural district, end quote. The storage facilities are not included in any of the special uses listed in Article 7. This facility will increase traffic on Ocotillo and will damage the road that is not maintained by the city of Benson. According to Cochise County Zoning Regulation 1716.02E1, applicant shall provide data supporting the estimated traffic volume as part of the application. There is no data provided and no research has been done to provide the data. Proper research for actual data needs to be provided. Mr. Malbuff's opinion is not data. There is no data provided for such reason, and it needs to be, I'm sorry, skip that. I don't speak publicly very well. He has also intended to have ingress and egress from Ocotillo, where there is no left-hand turn lane, and I do see that he has provided um, for the exiting onto his own property. However, this access will have to have a culvert installed as it is a heavy flow area during monsoon season which is why it was designated as part of stormwater management and the runoff from this area runs into the San Pedro River. Reference to this is mentioned in the Fish and Game Report, which if you don't have copies of that, I have one with me and I can give it to you. Uh, Mr. Malbuff has also understated the water usage to 3,650 3, gallons per year. If you flush a toilet three times a day and wash your hands, it's way more than that. There is also an underground river that flows north through this area. He has also decided that he is going to place a septic tank in what the county has designated as stormwater management area. This is a potential contaminating disaster, right, for contaminating both of my wells and those wells farther north. There is also a planned RV storage area in the proposed project, the section that asks for outdoor storage equipment, materials and productions, description of any measurement of screening from this neighborhood. He has just RV storage. He never described uh, what he was planning to do to screen any of it. In regards to the questions of noise, he says no. Uh, I used to manage an RV storage, and I know that there's a lot of noise, especially if he rents to contractors, because they're going to be having supply vehicles in and out of there multiple times a day. And if anybody has ever heard an RV start with a diesel engine, they make a considerable amount of noise. The applicant has also stated that there will be no odor, odors, no attraction of pests such as flies and mice. Again, there is no way for him to know that. Such facilities are natural places for rodents to be. There is no way for him to control what people store in these facilities. Additionally, placing poisons and location for rodents as part of this. Do I have to stop or do you want me to finish? Yes, ma'am, you have to stop at this point. But we thank you. Do you want a copy of this? I think it was included in what was. Well, no, this is different. You're welcome to submit it to the planner, ma'am. Our next speaker is Karina Mulholland online. Are you there? I'm here. Hello. Thank you. Please state your name and address and then begin speaking. You have five minutes. 
Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for allowing me the chance to speak. My name is Karen Mulholland. I own parcel 123-090-14A at 169 West Four Feathers Lane. I am east of the proposed project. Um, I'm a small business owner and I promote the local tourism and that contribute to the local economy here in Benson and Cochise County. And I vehemently oppose this project, this docket SU 2312. My business provides accommodations and it attracts tourists to our beautiful area who stay in my short-term rentals. They're attracted to this area of Benson due to the pristine and lush high desert setting just minutes north of I-10. My guests contribute to the local economy. They visit local vineyards and Tombstone, Bisbee, Karshner Caverns. They eat and shop in Benson. I feel that this project will impact my business because people book here due to its pristine um, scenery and the beautiful landscape, and it's very peaceful. Um, I feel also that we already have at least six RV and trailer storage places and at least four self storage units in and around Benson within a couple of miles of this proposed unit. And this construction project would increase traffic and dust and it would impact our street that is not maintained. And also it will give an unsightly view on the corner of West Four Feathers and Ocotillo Road. Um, before, during, and after completion of the project. Currently, for every one of my short-term rentals, Cochise County and the city of Benson receive lodging tax and therefore revenue. If my business is impacted, fewer short-term rentals will be the consequence, and it will directly impact that revenue to the county and to the city of Benson. I'm not against economic development in and around Benson. I just feel that this area is pristine and it needs to stay pristine. Um, I'm saddened um, by the fact our beautiful street risks having a large commercial establishment on the corner. It'll destroy the pristine desert. It'll rip up the current landscape and trees that provide habitats to wildlife. It will impact, probably, I feel it would impact my well. I have an artesian well. Um, and so I'm, I'm really against this project, and I thank you for listening to me today. Thank you, Ms. Mulholland. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak to this matter? Hearing none, Mr. Malbo, if you have five minutes for rebuttal. I think the only thing I would add is just that, you know, all of our due diligence, we haven't applied for a permit. You know, we're looking for the special use only at this time. So all of our due diligence is done through the building department, the health department and the flood department. So we don't get any of those permits without engineers, digging test pits, designing, making sure there's no adverse effect from flood to our neighbors. That's, you know, those are all the steps we have to go through when we go for a permit. Thank you. Thank you. The public hearing portion is now closed. It is time for commission discussion. Do we have any questions for the applicant or staff? Mr. Watkins. Uh, just to clarify, when people speaking against us, said that she understood that zoning meant one home for five acres and in 36 it's one home for 36,000 square feet approximately that, three or three quarters of that that, that is correct that the zoning is r36 which is one dwelling for 36,000 square feet the statements made in the letter and this evening are incorrect uh, as I have previously discussed uh, with that citizen at the counter, uh, there is a possibility that maybe there were some CCNRs that were adopted at some point in time that required those, but uh, staff did not see any and we do not enforce those if there were, but the zoning is R36. Okay, and just a quick calculation I did on that 15 acre parcel, you could have 18 homes. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. Anyone else? Ms. Welch? 
No, I don't have any questions. Mr. Young. So it, it is on a non-maintained road. Give me one second to get back to that screen and I will, uh, unfortunately you won't see my cursor, but I'll try to uh, explain it. So the property, let's find a better one. There we go. So if you're able to see the screen right now, uh, the property is, is uh, unusually shaped um, and four feathers road cuts kind of across the center of it. That is an unmaintained uh, road. The applicant will not be taking any access off of that road. All access will be taken from one single driveway uh, that will come off of the paved uh, and county maintained Ocotillo Road. So there will be no traffic as a result of this business going down Four Feathers Road. Thank you. I have one question, Mr. Kirschman, as far as you know, will there be an on-site residence? Manager, that was something that we have discussed, but I do not believe the concept plan includes that at this time. It's just a small office. Mr. Mabel, if you Thank you. Anyone else? Questions? We now call for the planning director summary and recommendation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Staff does have recommendation for a conditional approval. And we do have uh, several conditions um, proposed on this project. They were included in the packet, but I'll go through them uh, for the benefit of the public as well. Uh, one is that the applicant shall dedicate the necessary right of way for Ocotillo Road. The applicant shall obtain a right of way permit for the driveway and uh, provide any required improvements. A paved to match Ocotillo uh, Road driveway at a minimum of a 24 foot wide width with adequate turn radius and site distance uh, triangle taken into consideration shall be uh, provided. Uh, dimension shall be added to the site plan showing distance from the edge of the pavement to the property line and the edge of the pavement to the gate. Uh, this is again to uh, verify the that there's appropriate stacking room for vehicles outside of the county right away. Uh, dimensions for Four Feathers Lane needs to be added. Plans need to show dedication uh, of Ocotillo Road and then change Ocotillo Street to road. And uh, we actually have two different maps that have both street and road. So uh, I gave the applicant the wrong name. It's it's Ocotillo Road, which sounds better than street in my opinion anyways. Um, condition number eight, 20 foot setback uh, line shall be revised uh, to show a distance as measured from the edge of the road travel way uh, or property line, whichever is greater. And so in that instance, um, the property line uh, where the property line kind of jogs down. Um, it's actually on the north side of Four Feathers, and so they were shown a 20 foot from that property line. This setback is actually from the edge of the roadway, and so uh, it will bring that development further away from Four Feathers, and so that just needs to be shown on the site plan. Uh, site plan submitted with each phase shall provide a table showing cum cumulative square footage and percentage breakdown. And then in conjunction with the commercial permit, the applicant shall provide landscape plan demonstrating the minimum five foot landscape strip is provided both along Ocotillo Road and Four Feathers Lane. And a table shall also demonstrate the minimum 5% of the total site is landscaped. Uh, those are requirements of our code. I did include them as conditions just so that they were clear uh, for the members of the public as well as the applicant. Uh, with that, there is a sample motion on the screen and uh, I'll be happy to answer any final questions you may have. Thank you. A call for the motion, please. Madam Chair. Mr. Limbach. I move to approve docket SU 23-12 Ocotillo Storage on parcel 123-09-010-8 with the conditions of approval recommended by staff. The factors of approval constituting findings of fact. Thank you. A second? Second. Mr. Saunders, thank you. Is there any further discussion of this motion? No call for the vote. Mr. Montgomery? Or aye to approve. Mr. Limbach? Aye. Mr. Watkins? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mr. Gonzalez? Aye. Mr. Bartsky? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. And Ms. Welch? Aye. And the chair votes aye. It is unanimous. This motion carries. An individual disagreeing with this action has the right to appeal to the Board of Supervisors within 15 days. An application for appeal is available from the clerk at the office Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, or online at cochise.arizona.gov. Thank you.
that correct, Mr. Cox? Our next docket is number SU 23-13 called Sybil Airstrip. The applicant requests a special use authorization to legitimize an airstrip off North Sybil Road on Saint, in St. David. The applicants are Mr. and Mr. Webb. Are the applicants present? I think there is Mr. Webb online. Oh, you're both Brent, here? Brent Webb is here online. Brent Chandler Webb is there in person. All right, thank you very much. And our, our representative David Lee Decker is also online. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Kirschman, the planning director's report, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, property size 163 acres, encompasses parcel 12001 K and V. Zoning is RU4, rural one dwelling, four acre minimum. It is a growth category D and designated as rural residential. It's located within the St. David area plan. Uh, existing uses is an unpermitted airstrip and open range, and the proposed use is a permitted airstrip. Uh, this is an aerial view uh, looking uh, at the site. If you look directly to the south, there is some uh, straight lines, some disturbed area. Those are old um, runways that have since grown over that are located on state land. Uh, that used to be used for some of the uh, ag uses out in that area. The that is not the current location. Aerials have not been updated to reflect uh, the new um, runway. This is the site plan uh, provided by the applicant, showing an approximately 4,500 by 75 foot runway. Um, what has been cleared is actually actually exceeds that. It's about 5,000 feet and up to 150 foot uh, wide. Uh, there's also uh, a uh, area that has been cleared uh, for parking uh, of the uh, airplanes on that site. Here's some photographs of the site. A uh, little bit of background. This originally came in as a code enforcement complaint. Uh, we received a complaint that there was airplanes and a large amount of ground disturbance going on on the site. Uh, you can see the top left photo from the code enforcement file uh, showing an airplane parked on the side of the dirt strip. Um, on the the top right there that is just a photograph of the existing driveway coming in off of Ocotillo Road uh, which did not get a uh, uh, permit through the right-of-way department um, the bottom picture uh, as I was out there posting the property and looking at the site there was actually cattle going across the runway uh, and they were rounding up cattle on the site um, there is a condition uh, that is included at the recommendation of Arizona state land since they do have property both north and south of this uh, they are requesting that the runway be fenced off. Um, so one, safety of the pilots, but two, safety of the cattle and keep them off the runway. And so that has been included as a recommended condition of approval this evening. Uh, some additional photos. Um, the top left is a second driveway uh, that has been added uh, to the site, again, without benefit of permit from our right-of-way department. Um, and then top right just showing the runway with the mountains in the back and then bottom left native plants uh, that were uh, removed and bulldozed without benefit of permit from the state of Arizona. That is also another condition of approval that uh, staff has um, in Arizona. You can remove native plants on your property. However, if it's more than an acre, you're required to obtain approval from the state of Arizona. That approval has not yet been provided to this office uh, in discussions with the applicant. Uh, they are working on that uh, after the fact with the state. So there's a condition of approval that when they uh, come in to submit for their commercial permits, that they'll be required to provide um, that approval from the state. There are 10 factors used to evaluate all special use proposals as submitted. Uh, the application complies with eight, uh, and then uh, there are two with additional conditions. So it does comply with the uh, comprehensive plan, uh, zoning district purpose statement. Uh, traffic circulation will be minimal as uh, the applicant is proposing this only for uh, his and his sons. They're, they're, they, they both fly, they're both pilots. So this is for them to be able to uh, fly and park their plane and then uh, get to their home from that point. So this is not going to be uh, impacting you know, neighbors. This isn't a commercial airstrip or anything like that. This is a uh, proposed private. And it's not uncommon. We do get these uh, from time to time. I think the last airstrip we have is in the Sulphur Springs Valley about three time, uh, three, excuse me, about three years ago. Um, just 
unfortunately for this gentleman, these applicants, that they didn't do it before they got caught by somebody. Um, we did, um, excuse me, on the public op, uh, input, we did not receive any input from the public, either in support or opposition to the request. Um, Offsite impacts will be minimal uh, as the largest property owners in the area are state lands as well as the railroad, so uh, very minimal impact. Um, no hazardous materials proposed. Uh, St. David Fire Department requested and got confirmation from the applicant uh, easing any of their concerns about fuel storage, uh, both on site or the amount that would be contained in the plains. Uh, and water conservation, they're not proposing any utilities on the site, no well, no septic, um, no electric, so um, there would be no uh, impact as far as that goes. Um, with conditions, does comply with development along major streets. That's where uh, they do have to get right away permits uh, and they will have to pave their approaches um, to the same standard as um, Civil Road, which I believe is a chip sill. And then uh, we do have a condition uh, related to significant site development standards that requires their uh, entire parking area and driveway up to the runway to be gravel so that we do reduce dust uh, impacts from vehicles driving up and down and parking. And then the runway needs to be treated with some type of uh, dust polymer or something to keep the dust down because it is not too far away once the wind starts kicking up from um, Dragoon Mountain ranches. Um, so factors in favor, we got nine uh, of the nine criteria used to evaluate special use requests that complies with. Uh, it complies with the St. David area plan and factors against that this special use is in response to code enforcement action. With that, that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I do any have one questions question. from the commission. Just one uh, regarding the fence out. Uh, instead of fence in, but fence out. Um, what is the uh, well, the dimension of the spacing of that uh, pertaining to the runway itself? Is it a couple hundred feet on each side? Is it the whole property? What does that mean? The state didn't get into any kind of specifics. Their biggest concern is keeping the cattle off the runway. So they're showing a runway of 75 feet, but they've bladed anywhere from 130 to 150 feet. So they've got plenty of room to put mm -hmm. fencing out there. Okay. And then that is a condition of approval. That is correct. Thank you. And to clarify, Mr. Kirschman, it said two letters of opposition, but you said there was nothing. There were no letters either in support or opposition to this request. All right. Thank you. I call for the applicant statement. You have 10 minutes. Do we want to do that online or in person? Yeah, I'll I'll do that online and then I will refer to uh, Lee Decker. We need to, I just know when it would be appropriate to address the uh, the conditions. And if I may, Madam Chair, interrupt just as, just so that you know, there is a total of 10 minutes for all three of the applicants. That's that you get a total of 10 minutes between you. So you need to budget your time. Go ahead, okay. Mr. Go ahead, Mr. Webb. Okay. State your name and address. Just, my name is Brent Eugene Webb. I live on 1133 North Civil Road in St. David, Arizona. Um, with concern to the cattle on the land there is an active lease on that land uh lincoln doll is actively using that runway that is just to the south of us that is he uses he has the state land lease as well his cattle are regularly on the land i've talked to him we clear the land before we uh you know before there's any landing i have personally never landed on that dirt strip um there there's still a, a fair amount of dirt work to do also, the the width of the runway that's been bladed out, the, the reason we wanted to do that, the runway will actually only be 75 feet, but we bladed, bladed over so we could allow for kind of a bar ditch there so we don't have any runoff or water cutting across the runway or actually leaving the runway because we didn't want to create any new disturbance with any new washes or anything. So what that would do is actively let the water leach to through the field without running off of the field. I will turn the time over to Lee Decker uh, to address the, uh, the, uh, um, the the other concerns. Madam, Madam Chair and members of the commission, um, I'm Lee Decker. I'm with the law firm of Gallagher and Kennedy in Phoenix, Arizona. Do you need any other information from me before I launch in? No, sir, go ahead. Okay, the 
there were nine conditions. I I was able to look through the staff report here, and there were nine conditions, some of which were alluded to. I think they're going to come up in a later slide. And um, condition one is fine. Uh, talks about the driveway, uh, or at least the applicant obtaining a right of way permit through the county engineer. The second one, where it where it actually talks about, there we go. The second one where it talks about a chip seal driveway, we don't necessarily agree with. We think we'll work with the county engineer on obtaining the right of way permit, and that will dictate how the driveway is configured and constructed. So. Uh, on behalf of the applicants, uh, we would recommend that number two be dropped. On the third, on the third condition, I was not aware, it wasn't clear in the staff report that that was a request by the state land department. Um, it's, it's somewhat of an unusual request because it's, as I understand it, and Brent and Chandler could weigh in, um, Avoiding cows is something that can be done very easily by the pilots. And it's in essence a non-issue. So it's a it could be a significant cost for something that's not really required. But I was not aware that this was a state land request until I just heard it uh, just a few minutes ago. But we would we would recommend that that be dropped pending further discussions with the state land department. Um, condition number four, there is a requirement if you remove native plants off of your land to get a permit. But if all you're doing is clearing native plants on your land, there's just a requirement that you notify um, the state, the, the State Department of Agriculture, and then they respond back. So condition number four needs to be modified to basically say documentation of clearance from the state for, and it's not removal. Removal suggests removal from the site. That's not, uh, there's no intent to do that. Number five, um, this one, this one again, you know, it also talks about remove native plants. There's not going to removal of native plants. A stormwater pollution prevention plan, I'm assuming that reference is to ADQ or the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality's construction general permit. Um, that for this particular construction, although it exceeds more than one acre, arguably shouldn't be required. Um, and, and the reason is, is that the 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 runway was constructed such that there would be minimal runoff and the only receiving waters are very small ephemeral drainages that in order for them to actually reach what would be considered a water of the u.s that's actually jurisdictional it would have to reach the san pedro and that's not going to happen that's not going to happen at this site so we would recommend that number five be dropped as well. So moving on. To, to number six is fine as part of the non-residential use permit. Number seven, there is no flood plain, regulated floodplain in the area, and the applicant is not planning to have any impact on the, I think there's a couple of small washes on the site. They're not planning to impact those. We recommend number seven be dropped. Number eight is probably workable, um, but not, not sure that it's all necessary. Um, but so I'd recommend maybe a modification there. And then number nine is fine. So based on that discussion, we would recommend that the commission approve the special use authorization, but only after dropping conditions two, three, five, and seven, 
and an appropriate modification to four, which references a permit that's not required. And then number eight to be more specific to, or at least uh, after a discussion with the applicant. And I'd happy to take any discuss any questions. Thank you. There are three minutes remaining, Mr. Webb. Anything in the room? Yeah. So the in, on the conditions of the fencing of the land, the individual uh, is actively uh, the owns the state leased land is actively landing planes on that strip that is just to the south with uh, active grazing cattle on that. Um, and there would only be daylight operations, so um, there not be as there won't be any electricity on the site. So just be daylight operations. You just have to fly the field to clear the clear the field of the cattle. And if there's cattle on the field that we won't clear, we'd have to land in Benson. And, and that's just how that that would go. Um, and the individual that that lands there regularly, his cows are the land. Uh, he's the leaseholder on that land. Um, we will do everything we can to keep any water from leaving that runway site. We do not want to add any water to the to the washes. Um, the impact, the flight impact, would be very minimal. Um, uh, you know, for me, I have a flight or two a week uh, where I take off and land uh, once a week. Uh, my son would be very minimal as he's a, a professional pilot. Uh, and is no longer uh, actively flying in the St. David area very often. So it would be minimal impact to any neighboring, uh, anything out there um, with, with definitely no encroachment over any properties under Green Mountain Ranch or anything like that. We want to keep it as little impact as possible. Chandler, do you have anything to offer? Thank you. That's the end of the applicant statement. The public hearing portion is now open. This is a time for comments from other persons, either online or in person. You have five minutes. Is there anyone? I don't have any forms. Hearing none. Is the applicant willing to waive their rebuttal? Yes, I am. Thank you. The public hearing is therefore closed. This is a time for commission discussion. You may address your questions to the applicant or staff. Do I hear any? Mr. Gonzalez first. I have a concern. We've had discussions like this before. And the concern of density of uh, airplanes flying around our airspace uh, always came up. In this case, uh, you have a wonderful facility in Benson and you have a facility in Tombstone. I really don't feel uh, that a dirt landing strip on state land is needed in St. David. Cows have the right of way in the state of Arizona. If you remove vegetation, I would like to see the archeological clearances that allowed you to do that. You said you went beyond 75 feet. I wanna know what authorization is to do that. If in fact, you're only gonna do this infrequently, one or two times a week on an airplane from this proposed site, to Benson, it's less than five minutes. Uh, if you truly want to keep all impacts to a minimum or as little as possible, we don't need a, another landing strip that is dirt. I don't see a floodplain management requirement, uh, how you're gonna control that. You know that we have monsoon rains and the flows can be uh, can get away from it. There's erosion, there's flooding. The fencing to keep cows out uh, is an issue that is not gonna be easy to solve. 
you say you're only going to land during the day. Well, I know that you have the capability of landing on at night, all night long. And animals move around. It's not just cows. We have deer. We have coyotes. We have bobcats. We have all kinds of animals. Where is your life uh, wildlife management plan to reduce that impact? And the drainage off of that landing strip. How are you going to funnel those flows and where? Those are concerns that I have. So I don't feel very easy with adding yet another strip, a private strip for a couple of guys between St. David, uh, between Tombstone and Benson. Is that more of a statement, Mr. Gonzalez, that's or was there a... That's a concern okay. a statement that I wanted to share with my fellow commissioners. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Montgomery, anything? Well, I did. Um, you kind of covered some of it and not wanting to be uh, Captain Obvious here, but I did wonder about daylight operations only. Is, are there FAA regs on that in some way without lighting on the property or can you operate at night? If you want to. That's that's one question I have. And if so, uh, I would think wildlife would be, you know, harder to see quite obviously on the runway. Mr. Webb, can you clarify your daylight versus nighttime operation? Yeah, so uh, we went through a period of time uh, where I did have some night operations in Benson and the Benson lights could not come on. And I, you cannot land at night with a, without the electricity because you can't see the field. Now your, your, your landing lights light up the field once you're within about 30 to 40 feet of the field, but at night you cannot find that field without the without the landing lights and without electricity there will be i will not put my life or any passengers lives in danger or any any wildlife in danger for that matter uh to land at night without appropriate landing lights so without electricity there will not be any any night operations um uh, simply for the safety of of both pilot passenger and the animals Thank you. I and, and I'm unaware of any FAA regulations. So the, the state of Arizona um, allows for a pilot to land on any road without even declaring an emergency. So if that's a concern, um, legally I could land on civil road if I needed to without even declaring an emergency day or night, which I would not ever do. But uh, so uh, the the point about daytime and nighttime operation really I don't feel is valid simply because, you know, I, I I would not jeopardize my life by doing that, nor would I want to harm any animals. And that kind of ties in with the question about the fence again. Um, I, I think your representative wanted to drop that uh, request about fencing. Um, I forget what number that was. But uh, would, wouldn't that apply? Wouldn't that be useful to uh, preserving or you know preventing an accident of some kind with uh, wildlife of any kind out there? So, like I've said uh, previously, the the person that holds the state lease and that actively uses the runway to the south um, has approximately the same number of operations. Now that runway is a very primitive runway. Um, he has what they call a bush plane that is allows him to land in much rougher terrain than I would be able to land in my my airplane. The uh, um, fencing that off would be uh, such an expense that uh, the I I don't know that the expense would offset the benefit on that as you know the the cattle are actively grazing that land uh, but we we wouldn't land there if if the cattle are on the field okay that were just my questions about the fence i am i do not um, have expertise on the runway and, and so if i if i fence that off that would preclude the the individual from leasing that land for cattle operations as well okay two more quick ones number seven i think was uh floodplain use permit uh, you, you're asking to um, 
dropped that one too, I believe. Uh, is that uh, staff, is that a state requirement or is that for us at the county? No, so that condition says may require. So staff would not recommend any change to that condition. Mm -hmm. uh, once the applicant submits their commercial permits and we look at the drainage analysis that they have had prepared by a licensed engineer, then we'll determine uh, if they filled in washes that require floodplain use permit. Okay, thank you. The last quick question is about maintenance of this runway, which was mentioned in the monsoon or any regular rain around here. And we all know about dirt roads in Cochise County and what happens to them in the rain. Uh, of course, that would be your obligation to maintain. Uh, I, I guess you're aware of that, right? Okay. Yeah, abs absolutely. The, the runway would have to be maintained uh, at, at a very smooth rate. The soil there, that red soil that you can see from the air actually has a very good binder and holds very well. Um, the their soil that is on the west end that's a little wider that will have to be treated uh, to to be able to with, withhold the water runoff. Um, we may be able to use that red soil in the parking area, uh, cover that the parking area with gravel and, and then use that that red soil for the remainder of the runway because it does it actually does hold up very well in the rain um and binds it's got a little bit of clay just a slight bit of clay it's a decomposed granite with the uh, with the red clay and it it is actually very suitable for an airplane runway when we looked at surfaces and everything uh covering it with a b uh the soil that's actually there is is the best product we could actually but nature provided the best possible soil for that for that use. Yeah, very good. Madam Madam Chair, this this is Lee Decker. Just one thing to clarify: I just heard mention by one of the commissioners that the this airstrip is going to be on state land. Just to clarify, that's not accurate. It's on private land owned by owned by Brent and Chandler Webb. Um, there is state land adjacent to it, but it uh, the the proposed airstrip is on private land. Just a clarification. Thank you. To finish this conversation, state land versus private, Mr. Kirschman, is this fence required by state? And if they back off on that insistence, does the county have a interest? Thank you, Madam Chair. So the state very rarely responds to our requests. We send out, uh, we include state land on all of our projects. This is the first time in seven years I've actually gotten a response from state land. And the letter came from a Ms. Rhonda Buss um, and was copied Karen Dada, and this was forwarded on to the applicant and also included in the packet that was given to the applicant and the commission this evening. So all are aware of this email. And the email stated, Dear Robert Kirshman, thank you for Public notice issue 2313 regarding proposed airstrip, et cetera, et cetera. There are active grazing leases on the surrounding state trust land. Therefore, Arizona State Land Department recommends a stipulation to fence the airstrip and associated uses to prevent impact to wildlife. Uh, so that is straight from Arizona State Lands. It's not something that staff pulled out of the air that was at the request of them. They did go on further, which I forward this on to the applicant, and I'm not sure if they've addressed any questions um, to state lands yet, but they had questions regarding whether this was going to trigger any kind of height restriction setback because then they had concerns on how that would impact their state lands north and south. Um, yeah, that includes my response to that. Thank you. So this is really not negotiable on the conditions. State has to be satisfied. Um, and, and then if, if I may, Madam Chair, if they do approach state land and state land decides to provide something in writing to them stating that it's not required or they can do some kind of alternative, they could provide that at time of their commercial permit and then staff would be able to essentially waive that condition because we have that in writing. Thank you. <clears throat> Other questions, Mr. Limbach, any? Uh, no. Mr. Saunders, questions? No. Mr. Watkins? Um, I just have one. I guess I'm asking for sorry, clarification from the applicant. Um, you're, it seems like you're splitting hairs between removal of, doc, of vegetation or clearing the vegetation. At a certain point, there is permits required to clear. And I'm just wondering, are those documents being pursued? 
so the the document that I filed with the state of Arizona for clearing land has been filed and it is just a notice to them that states I'm I'm clearing land and uh, that I will not be removing any uh, native plants for sale or removal to provide to another property. That's so in the splitting here is I think the confusion comes from removing thinking I've uprooted them. Some of them have been uprooted. We tried to harvest the, the ocotillo and place them back on the west end, but we did not remove the ocotillo from the property. No, none of those native plants that are appealing uh, to a lot of consumers have been removed and sold to somebody else. That's what the state, you know, when I when I read that, the the requirement there is what they're concerned. I don't know, Lee. Do you have any anything to offer on that? Yeah, I think it's basically un under the native plant laws, you're required to get a permit versus just notifying if you're going to remove it. Uh, you're going to transport it from the site, but just to clear land, even if you're going to destroy native plants, that doesn't require a permit, but it does require notification to the state land department. That that's that was the distinction. So that has been done. The notification that that has been done. That is correct. Does that require a response from the state? There was no response. Uh, from the state that that has been submitted an email to them to the email on the uh, on the notice paperwork that I that I did file with the state and I can I can forward the email back to staff to show when that was sent to the state. Another comment I have you know, talked about doing away with condition two. Well, condition one kind of takes care of that. At least on the drive on the right of way permit. County can't really, my understanding, dictate what their actual driveway is going to look like going into the park, what it's going to look like coming off of civil. Purpose of protecting civil rights. So, can I speak on, on that? Go ahead. So, my my only thing that I don't understand is you've got right across the street the entrance to Dra Dragoon Mountain Ranch, um, and I don't know I'm not sure how many residents live up in those hills. There's probably a hundred vehicles per day that goes into Dragoon Mountain Ranch off of Civil Road. There's no apron. There's no chip sill. It goes right to that white dusty dirt um, that they drive on every day, uh, kicking up dust. Um, and, but there's never been any requirement for any dust control or apron on that driveway. So I'm just interested to see why they're treated one way and we're treated a, a different way on this. On this, And I, I completely agree with the right of way. I wanna make sure that there's no blind spot turning in or coming out of that driveway. And so we will comply with the state on that, but on the uh, uh, the requirement to cover it in, in rock or, or whatever they decide we need to have it and have the apron paved, I, I'm not understanding why that is a requirement or the legal basis of that requirement. Mr. Kirschman. Thank you, Madam Chair. So the applicant initially referenced the uh, Dragoon Mountain Ranches across the street. Uh, that was not required because that subdivision under the state of Arizona was not a subdivision. Those were all lots of 36 acres or more, which means the county does not get to say anything about the development that was going on in there. And it was done many, many years ago. Additionally, there's a few other single family residences up and down Civil Road, not many, but when you have a single family residence, you can have a native driveway. It is once you go to a commercial permit, which is the level that we are at with this. This is not a single family home. This is not a residential use. This is a non residential operation or a commercial permit, and that's why this is required. Um, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Young, Ms. Welch, any questions? No I believe from me. most of them might have been answered already. Thank you. Ms. Welch. I do not have any questions. Thank you. The chair has two questions. Um, when did you do the clearing? And was there any non-native fill brought in? The pictures look like there was. 
Mr. Uh, Webb? There was, yeah, there was no non-native fill whatsoever uh, brought in. Uh, matter of fact, the native dirt there is the best the, the best soil for that project. There will not be any non-native dirt brought into that. The land was cleared. Um, uh, and I, I apologize for my ignorance. I did not know that I could not clear vegetation off of my own land. And 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 I'll own up to that. Um, I, I did not understand that law. And uh, uh, I, I don't know what I need to do to make that right. But... Uh, um, I, I want this, you know, I live right there in that neighborhood. I want this, I want to retain the native beauty of that land. I'm actually contemplating allowing the natural grass to grow up on that strip uh, to control the vegetation or control the erosion as well um, and um, just pro provide some stability on the erosion control as well. Uh, but we've not decided exactly what we need to do on that runway. Um, other than that red soil is is the best the best soil for that runway. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Thanks. Call for the planning director's summary, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Before I get to there, there's a couple of things I wanted to address and I wanted to go through uh, uh, each of the conditions with you as well. So first, um, this property was cleared sometime in the fall of last year. Staff has been trying to get the applicant to submit a special use since as early as December of last year, um, and the application has finally been submitted. So it's been cleared for quite some time. Um, as far as the question about the fill, looking at it, though I'm no engineer, I do not believe that there was, I believe the applicant's his statement is correct. Um, it looks like they shaved off a, a small hill uh, in order to obtain that, that fill. So. Uh, I don't believe anything non-native was brought in. Um, to go through the conditions, the, the first comment I have is I do not recommend any changes uh, to the conditions as presented. They are all written and provided for a reason. Uh, first one, the applicants say they didn't have any uh, issues with. Second, they did. Uh, we've already stated this was a requirement. This is a requirement of any non-residential project. The previous docket was required to do it. The next docket is required to do it. This is required for all of our uh, special use requirements when you're located on a paved county maintained road. <clears throat> so staff would, would not recommend any changes to that. Um, the fence, as we've already exhausted, that came from the state and staff would recommend that that stay in. And if the applicant is able to work something out with state lands, they can provide something in writing to staff um, at that time. Um, so all we're asking for is the documentation that the applicant provided to the state. Um, uh, my understanding based on conversations with the applicant that was not applied for until after it was already removed and I had forwarded the information on to him asking for a copy of that uh, notice. Uh, additionally, I do want to add that we always include game and fish on these requests as well. They always comment and they did comment on this project as well. A uh, copy of that was provided to the applicant and included in the packet. Uh, they did have concerns and said that they needed to, uh, they were not aware that the site was disturbed. Um, so they based their comments on if it wasn't, uh, and they were saying basically if it's more than a quarter of an acre or more, they need to get, um, uh, they needed to coordinate with their office uh, and that possibly a native plant inventory may have been required. So it is their job and this condition, in my opinion, should remain uh, to work with the state and provide any documentation from them stating that what they have done is in compliance with state law. And once that's provided to us, that condition will be satisfied. Uh, a drainage analysis, stormwater pollution prevention plan, um, and consent to remove native plants. We've already talked about the plants. Um, when you disturb an acre or more, this is when these things come in. We're talking about, I believe, shoot, no, I can't remember, it's seven or nine acres, but we're talking about a large amount of area that has been cleared without uh, any kind of engineering review, at least that has been provided to the county. Um, we do not know what kind of impacts that could cause to downstream properties, to county right away. Um, the applicant's talking about doing swales and things like that. That's great, but that will all need to be designed by a licensed engineer and provided uh, in conjunction with their um, commercial permit and reviewed by the county engineer and floodplain department to ensure that what they're doing is not going to cause um, problems downstream. Um, uh, site plan grading plans required because they have done well over an acre of grading on that site. 
um, floodplain use permit may be required. It's not saying it is. Once we get the analysis by their engineer, uh, our floodplain uh, folks will evaluate that request and determine if a permit is needed or not. I can tell you that there were several small, small washes that were filled in, tops of hills shaved over to fill them in. Um, I'm not an engineer, so I can't uh, qualify whether or not it's an issue or not. That's that would be their engineer and ours to look at. Um, as far as all disturbed areas um, being treated to mitigate erosion, um, uh, staff would not recommend any changes to that. I was out there with a very light wind and my truck driving across um, the, the runway was kicking up dust, whether it was red soil or sandy soil. Yes, it was more at the far west end of the runway where it was more sand, but there was dust coming up. So staff would not recommend any changes to that uh, condition. Um, and then in conjunction with non-residential permit, the applicant shall provide documentation. I don't think they had any concerns on that one. Uh, so with that, staff does recommend uh, conditional approval, and there is a sample motion on the screen for you this evening. Thank you, Mr. Kirschman. I'd like now to call for the motion. I will uh, motion, uh, and Chair, I move to approve docket SU 23-13, Civil Airstrip, on parcel 120-01-001K uh, and B, with the conditions of approval recommended by staff. Factors of approval constituting findings of fact. Thank you. A second, please. Second. Mr. Limbach, thank you. Is there any further discussion of this motion? Then I now will call for the vote. Mr. Montgomery? I'll vote to approve. Aye. Mr. Limbach? Aye. Mr. Watkins? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mr. Gonzalez? Nay. Mr. Martsky? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Nay. Ms. Welch? Aye. The chair votes aye. The motion carries. Any individual disagreeing with this action has the right to appeal to the Board of Supervisors within 15 days. An application for appeal, appeal is available from the clerk or online at cochise.az.gov. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone need a break? Yeah, she's going to suggest let's take a five minute break. Five minute break, please. Okay. If there were like an issue downstream, as you mentioned, that, could, that can always be shut down. Like that. Not too far away from the last month's recent. concerned about that. I didn't look at the pictures closely. Is there enough going on? Pretty much. Hi, Albert. Hi, how are you? Good. Uh, well, okay. Just worried if I'm on a guy. I just came to Costco. I return. I'm coming to buy paper plates and stuff. I need for. Mm -hmm. Saturday, Larry's Larry's in, in the hospital. What's wrong? Yeah. Well, she called me about eleven that she was going home because Johnny called her they had a fever and he was like hallucinating. So she, she ran home and they're gonna she was gonna take them to ER to Tucson. They couldn't get him up, so they had to call the paramedics, the ambulance. Mm -hmm. They thought he was having a heart attack. And they took him to Benson. So they thought maybe it was an infection in the knee. Mm -hmm. his, his oxygen was down to 72. Oh, God. Anyways, so now they think it was, it's a blood clot in his lungs. They just did a, they just did a CAT scan. And, and that's what caused, I guess when you have a clot in your lungs,
Shall we come back to order? Our final docket number is SU 23-14, Barataria Feed. Applicant requests a special use authorization to construct a feed store and a future arena. Applicant is Mr. Albert Armenta. Is Mr. Armenta present? Oh, he's coming back. That's that's good. <laughs> Mr. Kirschman, your report. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I do have to apologize because in copy and paste, I left uh, the slaughterhouse on from the docket last month. I assure you this is not a request for a slaughterhouse. <laughs> this is for a feed store uh, and associated arena. So the site is approximately 20 acres. It is parcel 107-62009A. It is zoned RU4, which is rural one dwelling per four acres. It is in growth category D and designated as rural residential. There is no area plan. The existing uses are uh, an unpermitted feed store. Um, the, the way it's set up today is the applicant has a few uh, sheds, you know, 120 square foot, 200 square foot, not permit needed necessarily, uh, where he's got some feed stored in it. And then he has hay stacked up on the property that he sells and keeps covered with a tarp at this point. Um, phase one, uh, he has an existing 4,000 uh, square foot building sitting in parts on the site that he would like to have approval to be able to build to house that hay, keep it out of the elements. Um, and then phase two uh, would be a larger building. And there was a lot of concerns expressed by the neighbors because of the size of 60,000 square feet. Um, the feed store is not going to be an entire 60,000 square feet. There's also an indoor arena that is proposed um, uh, inside there uh, for activities of uh, equine nature, excuse me. So this is an aerial aerial photo of the site. Um, there are single family homes located in and around the area, but it is a large 20 acre site. Uh, you can see. In this area here, it's already been disturbed. That is the area where uh, the sheds and um, the feed is kept. There's a small rise right here as well as some uh, thick vegetation, which makes it almost not visible uh, from Barataria Road. It's uh, you, you see there's some block uh, brick houses, rock houses, there's uh, RVs, some other things, but you can only see the rooftops of the structures in the back. This is the applicant's site plan. Uh, so uh, this is phase one in this area where the hay is stored, where the hay barn will be built, and then the sheds. Excuse me, and then this would be the future phase of the 60,000 square foot building. Um, currently, access to the site is from the adjoining property, um, and so it comes in. So it comes in off of Barataria Road and then kind of cuts across and goes back to this area. Uh, staff has a condition that if he is going to leave that access there, that he'll have to get an easement recorded across that property uh, to use. Uh, I believe it, and he can comment to it, but I believe it is also a uh, business partner or family member that owns that property, so it shouldn't be an issue. But long term, he wanted to have the access on his site anyways, and so that new access is proposed there. In either case, uh, the applicant is required to obtain right away permits uh, as well as providing uh, a paved entrance um, to match what is uh, out there in Barataria. And I don't recall if it's chip sill or if it's pavement, but whichever one it is, as part of the right away permit, he will be required to do that for his approach. Uh, we also do have a condition that the remaining uh, driveway as well as parking and staging areas uh, are gravel and or some kind of dust treatment. Um, the applicant did state and, and we talked about, you know, that you know, the soil is fairly good, that there's not too much dust that comes up, but there was enough dust uh, even while uh, we were out there with minimal wind that it could potentially be a concern, um, especially if business picks up and you've got a lot more vehicles coming in and out of there. So staff feels that uh, that requirement, which is in our zoning regulations, uh, should be enforced. Uh, here's a drone footage of the site, so even better view. Uh, again, there's the access coming in from the property next door. Um, there's a little arena set up with there wasn't any animals or anything like that when I was there. The hay is over here, and then there's some uh, you know, miscellaneous feed and tack stored over there. And so the folks come in, they park over there, get loaded up, and then head out. Uh, just some additional photographs of the site. Again, right hand side, kind of looking into the back of the property. Uh, there's a lot of native screening um, that uh, helps to uh, keep the special use away from uh, visible from Bart. 
Uh, some site photos. So we have 10 factors that we use to evaluate all special use permits. The application uh, complies with five, and then with conditions, we have five. So it complies with the uh, comprehensive plan as well as the zoning district purpose statement. Um, we did receive four letters in opposition to the request. Two of those were from the same household. Uh, we did receive some other letters that came in uh, after the deadline, but they did not have parcel numbers or other identifying information on them. Um, so we're not sure if they lived in the area or if they were from other areas. Uh, a lot of the opposition uh, revolved around the concerns of competition for an existing feed store in the area, uh, which is not a, a matter that staff looks into. But there was also concerns regarding dust, uh, traffic increases, uh, noise, etc. And so with the recommended conditions as well as staff's development regulations, all those items uh, would be addressed, whether it's the dust proof material or complying with outdoor lighting regulations, um, etc. Uh, with conditions development along major streets, which it is, they'll have the right of way condition and pavement. Um, traffic circulation phase one would not increase the traffic uh, above and beyond what is already out there today. Um, there is a condition that once phase two moves forward, that a uh, traffic uh, impact analysis may be required um, by a county engineering just to determine if uh, there are any additional improvements uh, that might need to be required as a result of uh, the increase in side and additional uses on the property. Uh, adequate services and infrastructure, um, significant site development standards and offsite impacts are all handled by the conditions which we've discussed and we'll discuss more fully later on. So factors in favor of approving the request, it does comply with 10 out of 10 with the uh, recommended conditions. Project will provide uh, diversity of business as discussed in the comprehensive plan. Um, Going to read all those for you. You've read them in the report, um, but supports preservation, expansion, uh, Cochise County Tourism, Technology, Agriculture, um, traditional rural ways of life, farming, ranching, other agricultural related activities. Uh, the request is consistent and compatible with the zoning district purpose statement. Uh, and again, we did receive four letters in opposition, um, two from the property um, on the uh, far east outside of the notification ring. Um, I did have a conversation with a gentleman that lived in this area. Initially, he was hesitant about the request. Uh, ultimately, he did send me an email saying that as long as they comply with our outdoor lighting regulations and conditions, he had no issues with it. Uh, with that, that concludes my presentation. The applicant is present. I'll be happy to answer any questions following public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Kirschman. Mr. Armenta, are you prepared to speak? Yes. Come on up to the microphone. State your name and address before speaking. Good afternoon, uh, Albert Armenta, 8876 East Hawthorne Lane. Um, so this is a. Uh, a project that we decided to do because it's desperately needed in our area. Um, we have customers all over the county, all the way into Sonoida. The majority of our business right now is delivery, uh, but because of an overwhelming request from the public, we went into feed, into feed, bagged feeds. So we literally did that. I've been selling hay for quite a while. And I didn't really want to get into bag feeds, but when they ask you must you must offer so that's why we're doing what we're doing um i'd be glad to answer any questions that you have thank you we may we may have some and we'll call you back mm -hmm. at this time the public hearing is open and, and we call for comments from other persons i have three requests to speak the first person is pat morris Please state your name and address, Ms. Morris, and you have five minutes. Uh, my name is Pat Morris, and 4916 South Mescalero Road. Um, I do have one question. When you were talking about where the entrance is, is that off of Ranch Road or is that off of Barataria? Okay. We live right across the street. Um, Originally, when we received the letter, it said that it was going to be on the corner of Natoma and Barataria, which it shows on the map it is. But where the, they're um, talking about where they're putting it is directly across from our street. In other words, we live on a dead end street. And as we come out, 
um, that's the only exit we have off of our road. So my concern is the heavy traffic. Um, that road was, we've been there for 35 years and that road is not built for um, heavy traffic as far as I'm concerned. Um, again, he did say that there was gonna be gravel roads, not a lot of dirt. That was one of my concerns. So if it is gravel and fine, uh, again, Again, my concern is more so of the arena, the indoor arena, what kind of activities are gonna be in that arena and if that's gonna increase the traffic coming in. So in other words, if there's a lot of traffic and the entrance is off of Barataria, is that gonna impede our leaving our property, getting out on the road if there's a lot of traffic going in and out of the arena? You know, I don't know whether that's what's going on. But anyway, yes, I'm against it because it's a rural area. We moved there years ago for the quiet, peaceful area. And um, again, I think the increased traffic is what is my concern. And if it's going to impede our entrance and leaving um, our property, which is directly across the street. And I couldn't tell on the map exactly where your entrance is. That's why I thought maybe it was on ranch. Because you Moore, said it was on the property. Oh, I'm sorry. This is just our time to listen to your oh, comments. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, there's just some more questions. Where actually is the restaurant? Because we're on Mescalero, which is right across. And there is a dirt road that I noticed the other day that like maybe they're going in and it's up over a hill. So I didn't know where they're going to take the hay. In other words, when they deliver the hay, is it going to be delivered on Barataria where they have to unload it on Barataria? Or is it going to go back into their property? So my main concern is the traffic and things that are going on. Thank you. Thank you. Next to speak is Mr. Castle. Come on up. State your name and address. You have five minutes, sir. My name is Garrett Castle of an 8750 East Baratarian. I'm just about three or 400 meters down from where this project's going to be at. Um, I'm, I'm for this project. I don't see any reason why they shouldn't have this project built. Um, I've talked to some other people who live on Barataria, and again, the majority of the opposition was increasing traffic. But the people who opposed this were all down at the um, dead end. And so Barataria, ends has us uh, from Mosin to ranch is asphalt and from ranch down to the dead end is all dirt road. Um, 8191 is going to be on the hard top part of the road. So any increase in traffic is going to be on the hard top. It's not going to be on the dirt roads. So it's not going to be any increase in dust. Um, there is already as far as businesses go on Barataria, there's an electronic, uh, electrical contractor who lives off of Barataria and Ricardo, and he has a fleet of three trucks and trailers. And then there's another guy at the, at the other end who has an ammunition reloading company. So, I mean, so there's not going to be, and they have traffic on, on and off all the time, but their traffic is going to be on the dirt road. So as far as increase in traffic and dust, far as this project goes, is not going to be concerned because he's going to be on the blacktop part. Um, so as, as far as that, that's, 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 as far as I know, that's the biggest opposition is the increase in traffic, which is, I don't see it happening. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Mr. Craig Falowitz. Name and address, please, sir, and you have five minutes. My name is Craig Fallowitz, 5373 South Molson Road, and I'm just uh, just right down the road, about a half mile or so from the uh, property. And uh, I'm also opposed to it for uh, basically the same reason that the first speaker was. Um, just concerned about the safety of the overall area, um, the increased truck and uh, car traffic from both the uh, uh, increased deliveries after me going out to the property um obviously increased um people going there to buy things it's going to increase the uh automobile traffic quite a bit um 
there's a lot of uh, horse traffic. A lot of people like to ride the horses in the area. Uh, I'm concerned about that um, as well as uh, foot traffic. There are there are people that do walk from one place to another in the area, as well as bicycle traffic. And uh, just with uh, increased uh, movement and all the truck traffic and all that, I'm, I'm just concerned that it's going to be uh, uh, a safety issue. Um, also, the dust, I, I understand it is uh, it is on uh, a paved road, but uh, the area on the entire 20-acre property is, is not paved. And uh, even if there is gravel or some sort of uh, dust abatement uh, that's going to be put down there, um, there's still going to be an increase in dust. Um, you know, it's already windy and dusty in this area, as everybody knows. And uh, even if you have trucks going on gravel, just the extra traffic and wind stuff moving around like that, it's gonna it's gonna increase um, dust. Um, I'm also concerned about the phase two uh, and the phase one with uh, light pollution. Um, you know, we like we kind of like it quiet out there, and we like you know not as much light and not as much noise. And uh, with phase one and especially phase two. Um, you know, we're concerned about the uh, the light pollution as well. You know, we, we kind of like to, we like it dark and quiet at night. And um, if we've got a lot of extra light, that's going to kind of, you know, ruin the atmosphere that we have out there. So, um, and that's all I have, but I'm, I'm opposed to the idea. Thank you very much. Is there anyone online that has comments regarding this docket? Hearing none, it's time for the applicants. Madam, Madam Chair, I did have a hand just raise. Um, okay. uh, Deborah, so I don't know your last name. Uh, if you'd like to speak okay. now would be on this item. Now is the time. Thank you very much. I'm sorry to get in late on this. I will be brief. Um, so my name is Deborah Chatham. I live at 7835 East Canada Drive, and I'm about a half a mile from this proposed business. And I am speaking today on opposition of this docket. Um, I have nothing against these people. I don't even know them. And I have nothing against horses. I do have something against businesses that are east of Moson Road. I think we're getting too many, and that is not why we live here. It's a quiet neighborhood. The infrastructure on the is not, it's not to standard for these kinds of businesses. And also there is a state statute, ARS 13-2917. And it says that it guarantees us the right to Enjoy our property. It does not interfere with the comfort, enjoyment of life, property by entire community or neighborhood or by considerable number of persons. There's just almost no way businesses of this size can. I hope I'm still online. Can you still hear me? Oh, okay. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, I don't see how businesses um, of this size can function and not be disruptive to a considerable number of people. I will be disrupted. Um, by businesses of this size, perhaps not on this particular business because I am not on that road, but I'm just speaking because I'm generally opposed to businesses of this size being in off of Mosin Road. It's just, I feel not appropriate and I'd really appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else online that we've missed? Hearing none, Mr. Armenta. Do you have response to any comments that have been made? Come up, please. You also have five minutes. So um, phase two is literally going to be off of pro uh, the success of phase one. OK, um, as far as dust control goes. Most of the people who are complaining about dust, they need to realize that there are 99% dirt roads out where we live. I don't care who you are, how long I've lived here 30 years myself. You aren't going to get away from dust. That's just the facts of the matter. Um, are we going to create more dust? We'll definitely put down all of the required footing that you all are going to uh, prove to make sure that we are going to minimize that to its fullest. Um, as far as um, the growth of the are the driveways that you're asking about the driveways, um, we are going to make sure that these driveways are going to make be plenty sufficient for whatever trucks come in and out. I've been down Barataria 30 dang years and I, I'll tell you right off, there's not a lot of foot traffic down Barataria. There are not a lot of bikes down Barataria. I'm a horseman myself. Um, so I know about horse traffic. There is not a lot of horse traffic around there that we're going to be impeding, that the regular traffic doesn't already impede. Basically all of the complaints that are coming back for or against this 
um, they're pretty much null and void as far as what this project's going to hold. Again, phase two, that's going to be way down the road. That is a much bigger project, which with, it's going to take a whole lot of more than just saying I want a big building. Um, it's going to take a lot to have phase one succeed to make phase two even, even a twinkle in our eye. Um, if you all have any more questions, I'd be glad to answer. Them. Thank you. Why don't you hang out there? We might have some questions okay, for you. Super. The public hearing is now closed. It is time for commission questions to staff and the applicant. Anyone? I do have one. Mr. Montgomery. OK, um, we address this uh, issue a lot here, right. and uh, I do also live nearby in that area, and uh, we know that uh, the night sky is a precious commodity around here. Absolutely. And so lighting is always an issue that comes up. I'm sorry, I was going to speak to that as well. I OK, zero lighting. Zero okay. light. We don't work after five o'clock or after six o'clock. Um, there's no need to. I mean, we have families as well. So we want to do like everybody else, have our business day and go home with our families. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Watkins. Um, on your phase two, and you alluded to it, that it all depends on phase one. Yes, sir. Um, it, I guess this was your pie in the sky dream. Absolutely. Um, and it, I, do you see yourself maybe scaling it down at some point? This is why we asked for such a big building. For approval for something like this, because depending on the or the uh, success of the first pro or phase, will tell us how big a building can we actually go to. My pie in the sky is this building, and we want it enclosed for the simple reason that we understand there's houses around us, and we understand that people are going to be concerned about dust. If it's inside, and we can have all of our shenanigans uh, contained, then we would like that, so that way we don't have any of the neighbors. That are going to be uh, upset by this. So, would the arena be fully enclosed, or just absolutely it... nope, fully enclosed building? And do you envision like large ropings or? Barrel That's races? our hope. If we can get some ropings in there, uh, if we can get some barrel races in there, um, if we could just do just some nice local events. The whole purpose for this whole project is to bring this community together. There are not there's nothing like this in the in the county to bring families together to do some small gym conas for some like the local kids and and then to get the businesses involved and have some small businesses be able to come in and just be able to be promoting them as well so it's, to, it's my dream is to have this have the whole community come together and i guarantee you i like i say i've lived out here 30 years myself i understand what it's like to have traffic and such so we'll do our due diligence to make sure that we minimize you know, all of the concerns that our neighbors have. Question, I guess, for staff, is there a time frame on phase two when they have to begin? So the way our conditions work is he will have 12 months to apply for his first permit for, for phase one, and that essentially then will lock him in. Um, yeah, it doesn't lock in forever, but there's nothing specific in the code that says this is good for five or 10 years. We've had phased developments that have been either given a condition of approval for it must come in within five years or 10 years, but uh, no, there's nothing in the code specific, specifically says. Are there any other questions? Mr. Young? Yes, I have a question. Go ahead. Okay, Ms. Deborah, where, where, which one is her parcel in this group? In, in the, you know, in the opposition. Sorry, I uh, did not know. I apologize. Did, did you want me to answer that question? I'm Deborah. Yes. Oh, OK. I am at 7835 East Canada Road, so I am at the uh, next Brill Road up uh, north of Barataria. North? OK. On, yeah, on Canada and um, LaDonna, actually. OK, I'm sorry, I don't know my parcel number. That's not on this map. Mr. Young, was that the extent of your question? Can can Robert kind of uh, show us where this is? I don't believe she is on the map. I believe she is further north of it, which would be outside the 750 foot notification ring. Thank you very much. Ms. Welch, any questions? 
No, I do not have any questions. Chair has a couple questions for the applicant, if you don't mind. Um, would you have nighttime ropings or gym cannons? So th that'll depend on how big our, business, our building gets. Um, right. So there's a lot to be determined on the, the building. Either way, if it, it has to be big enough for an indoor arena, I will not. I do not want an outdoor arena because of our weather, because I want these things to happen. I run a horse academy as well, and we do a lot of cancellations during the summer because of rain, because of heat, because of wind. This is my whole dream of why I want an enclosed building. So that way we can run these functions inside. Will we have outdoor lighting? It would, if it was, if we did have outdoor lighting, it would be very minimal, very low key. All the lighting would be inside. So that way all the activities would be inside. So it is possible you would have nighttime events. And then the announcing I'm sure would bleed out of the building. <laughs> I've well, been, I've been around I hear arenas. You my life again our whole deal is to make sure we do our due diligence to make sure all of our neighbors are, are happy so yeah. again it's going to be whenever that happens it'll be all about what do we have to do to insulate what do we have to do to make sure that all of our noise stays contained as as much as possible thank you i think that's all i had for you sir no ma'am sorry this is the public portion is closed thank you mr Minton. absolutely thank you. Mr. Kirschman, do we have anything in in uh, code that gives us an idea of what a roping arena would draw for people? I have uh, the horse trailers and the trucks, and it's really going to depend on on how large he ends up going with and how how big he is. But that's why we have the condition of approval requiring uh, potentially requiring a traffic impact analysis with that second phase because. If it is going to draw a large number of trailers, large number of vehicles, there is always the possibility that street improvements could be required, such as a turning lane or something of that nature. And that report would be what would dictate that. And would that commercial permit also involve parking lot lighting? So we generally do not require parking lot lighting. There are some minimum standards contained in the building code for, for safety, such as on uh, entry doors and things of that nature. But we do have our outdoor lighting regs that requires the lighting to be directed down, um, shielded. Um, you're capped at a number of lumens. Uh, one thing I, I do want to mention, I was going to mention later, but since we're talking about lighting and outdoor arenas, um, the way our RU4 zoning is laid out, and the commission kind of dealt with this a few months ago with the Sirota um, special use, uh, commercial riding arenas are permitted by right. <clears throat> so he's going a little bit beyond what the scope of a riding arena would be, where you're doing horse clinics and some of the stuff he's already doing. He could go out there tomorrow, get a commercial permit, and he could start conducting uh, horse riding lessons, et cetera, on the property. And that would be outside. And as he's expressed and as we've discussed, he wanted to do these indoors to limit the impact of the uh, uh, lighting on the nearby neighbor, the dust, uh, odors, et cetera. Thank you, Mr. Kirschman. Did I answer your question, Madam Chair? I kind of went roundabout on that. No, you did, because the next question I was going to, the reason I was looking at you, I was going to ask you about the cross purposes of the by right versus, yeah. We'll take your recommendation and summary now, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to go through a few things real quick. So there was concerns raised about the um, driveway to the site and, and how it is going to line up with other driveways and roadways in the area. That is part of the right-of-way permit. So uh, though the applicant may show this is where they want their driveway, uh, if it is uh, going to have conflicts with other driveways, um, then they would request that that be moved uh, to a different location. Ideally, you want intersections to be lined up at a 90 degree angle, not offset uh, to create a safer intersection. So that would be taken in consideration as part of the right of way permit. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, as far as outdoor lighting, I think I already addressed that. They have to comply with our outdoor lighting regulations and typically. Uh, the only thing that the building code is going to require is for safety purposes, such as, uh, as at the doors. Um, I think that's it. So we'll go ahead and move on. We do have a recommendation for conditional approval. Uh, and so with the non-residential permit, the applicant shall obtain a right-of-way permit. The driveway uh, connection shall be paved uh, to the same surface as Barataria Road. Should the applicant wish to continue using uh, the existing driveway on the adjacent parcel to the east, ingress and egress easement shall be recorded. 
Um, outside of county right away, uh, the driveway parking and all maneuvering areas shall consist of dust proof materials such as gravel to prevent fugitive dust from leaving the site. In conjunction with phase two, traffic analysis shall be provided. Any offsite improvements required by that document will be required. And if we get to phase two and the county engineer determines that that's not required, then she would be able to waive that uh, at that time. Uh, in conjunction with the commercial permit for phase two, the applicant shall install a commercial septic system and restroom facilities in compliance with the building regulations in place at the time. In conjunction with the non-residential permit, the applicant shall provide a fully detailed and dimensioned site plan that meets the, momentum, the minimum submittal requirements. At this stage, we're dealing in concept plans, as you saw, uh, but it'll need to be much more detailed once we get to the commercial side. And then all disturbed areas uh, outside of driveways, parking maneuvering areas uh, shall implement methods to control erosion. Could include uh, dust polymer, hydro seed, or other approved methods uh, that the applicant proposes. Uh, and, and the goal of that is basically just to make sure that any of the uh, open areas that have been disturbed are not having either uh, erosion due to dust or water or wind, excuse me, wind or water. Uh, with that, there is a sample motion on the screen. I'd be happy to answer any final questions that you might have. I'd like to call for the motion, please. I move to approve docket SU 23-14 Barataria fee. Yeah on parcel 107-62-009A with the conditions of approval recommended by the staff, the factors of the approval considering the findings of fact. Second. 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 Mr. Martsky, second. Is there any further discussion by the commission? Hearing none, we call for the vote. Mr. Montgomery. The vote aye. Mr. Limbach. Aye. Mr. Watkins. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mr. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Martsky. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. And Ms. Welch. Aye. Chair votes aye. This is unanimous. Any individual disagreeing with this action has the right to appeal to the Board of Supervisors within 15 days. Thank you very much. It is time for the planning director's report. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Madam Chair. There are three dockets scheduled for July. Um, we've have a um, a rezoning and a comp plan change, similar to what you heard tonight. Um, we also have a modification to the solar project that you approved at last month's meeting, so they acquired some more acreage, um, which will help them move some things around and alleviate the proximity to some of the neighbors who expressed concern. So they did acquire another 640 acres. So they're already coming back to modify that. And the third one is a rezoning from RU10 to RU4. Just a reminder to the commissioners, if you decide to vote against the docket, if you could please provide an explanation for that. Sometimes in your comments, uh, Mr. Gonzalez, you had a negative vote, but you had made some comments earlier. And then Mr. Saunders, you had made a negative vote, but without any substance to why. So it's just very helpful for us when these get appealed to the Board of Supervisors and um, the Board of Supervisors can understand, uh, you know, why commissioners voted against votes that vote against something. Um, there, in, in mind, excuse me to interrupt. What about comments in favor? Is that irrelevant? You're approving it. If you vote to approve it, if you're if you're voting in support of staff's recommendations, the analysis and factors in favor are the constituting the factors. It could be redundant. I know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't. It's it's helpful, I think, to have comments, but not always necessary. I think, especially on a night like this, you know, there's a lot going on. We don't want to be here till ten o'clock at night for sure. So. Um, essentially, without making comment as to why you're supporting it, you're just supporting the analysis of stuff. <laughs> True, we work, yeah. we get paid by the year, right? And um, the is trying to get better at remembering that. Yeah, and I hate to interrupt. <laughs> no, um, to do it, but it's a, it's a good point that you made. Yeah, should have uh, waited till I before I voted. 
is to state my comments. Well, sometimes your your comments indicate what, how you're going to vote. Yeah, and that's that's supportive of your vote. It would have been real clear with mine, wasn't it? It was, I'm sorry. The way I was going to vote was what I was saying. It was yeah. fairly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's OK. That's OK. It's helpful for the it's maybe yeah. in all fairness to the applicant as well. Um, Christine is out of on vacation right now. Uh, Christine has been promoted to planning division manager with the county. Um, and as you know, we are creating Mr. Kirchman is moving on to greener pastures. Uh, I think we have a cake or something. No. Do we have food? Is that what? Where, where could there be a greener pasture? Um, so he is moving on to the city of Wilcox. So he's going to be the planning director of the city of Wilcox. So it's why, well, as much as I hate to lose, I think we're going to really understand the loss of Robert when he's gone. <laughs> so I'm very fearful just of the next week when he's not here and Chris, Christine isn't here and it's just Susan and I. Um, as to the amount of work that he does, he primarily works in the Benson office. When he was presenting online, I could go months without seeing him. And I always knew the work was was getting done. He was working hard up there. Um, so not really knowing everything that he does because the work gets done. I am I'm a little I'm a little afraid actually when he does leave. So um, but we'll figure it out as you can see tonight, you know, just his um, professionalism and his approach to these dockets and his uh, clarity and explanation uh, is is truly going to be missed. Um, but I'm very happy for him. I would encourage all staff to better themselves and to move on to to higher positions in government um, and to advance their career. So um, and I just thank you, Robert. Uh, I do appreciate it. He was here when I got here and he really helped me figure things out in my current position and he's been very helpful for me through the five, five plus years that i've been here so um ditto all those positive yeah, things do appreciate that so anything else to add robert i just want to say thank you it's been great working with you guys excuse me i've been doing this for almost 18 years and this is the best commission that i've worked with um hey, could the, you repeat that the sure. professionalism that you guys have the the understanding um you know, when you have questions, you call, you ask, you email. Um, I'm truly going to miss you guys, and so thank you everything for everything you guys have done for me and and providing guidance. That is a very important question. Yes. How long is it going to take for you to regrow your? Um, I had some fire damage, so um, hopefully not too long. Um, <laughs> but uh, even last time I grew it out, uh, it was at length probably within six months. I'm starting to lose it. So, is there anything else? I have one question. It's on the edges of what we've discussed. Do you have any updates on the Miracle Valley and what might happen over there? Hmm? The dome. Yes, I know. Uh, <laughs> so, we will be having a work session with the Board of Supervisors that is yet to be scheduled. And nothing is happening. The county is doing nothing and nothing will happen until um, direction is provided by the Board of Supervisors to staff. I am impartial, by the way, but I uh, read in the Herald, I think that it has it been declared a historic site or some protected uh, definition. No, no, <laughs> um, it has been declared eligible. eligible. There is a fairly lengthy process that would be required to actually place it on the National Historic Record, State Historic Preservation, you know, national, I can't, I don't know what the listings. National yeah, the National Registry of Historic Places. So for the state, and there's a fairly extensive process that either the county as a, the current owner or caretaker of the property or the current future owner have to partake. Um, it's not insignificant, meaning there's tax and breaks if they do achieve that designation. Um, but we will that will be explained to the Board of Supervisors. So. Um, at, a, at a work session, so I don't want to say too much because of that future work session. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Anything else from the commission? Thank you, Robert. Adjourned. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it was an interesting meeting. Yeah.
I just don't like air straws. Yeah. Too much noise on it. Yeah. Hold on, stick it around until Robert's by. Yeah. 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 Yeah.